that Krishna is coming in his dynasty that the moon appeared full. So Lord Ramachandra was born with the son Maharaj Dasara. Maharaj Dasara had three principal wives. He was a king. So kings generally they have four wives. Actually, Maharaj Dasara has 360 other wives. Just like Lord Krishna has 16,000 wives. So, yeah, Maharaj Dasara has 360 wives. Uh, and there were three principal wives. The Koshalya, Koshalya, Sumitra, Sumitra, and Kaike. Kaike. So Koshalya was the mother of Lord Ramachandra. The Koshalya is Ramachandra go around. And Sumitra was the mother of uh, 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 Sumitra Jai, Bharatra Satyabhita Mahamudra. And Kaike was the mother of Bharat. And Kaike is in Bharat Go Bharat and the Shatrugna and Bharat and who is the other brother? Lakshman. 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 So Lakshman was very attached to Lord Rama. Lakshman Jai, Rama Chandra Sai, Tame Asaktaun. And the same way, Shatrugna was very attached to Bharata. So you had these four brothers. And Lord Rama is always with Lakshman and Bharat is always with Lakshman. So in this way these four boys they grew up to be very much loved by their father. Now Kaike, Kaike was the younger wife of Tassara. Kaike is a Sanisthi You know, when you have women together, more than one wife, you could understand very difficult to keep women happy. <laughs> So Kaike was the youngest wife, she was the younger wife, she was the favorite of Maharaj Dasara. Dasara means ten chariots. He could drive, he could drive ten chariots. But still we had problems with his wife. <laughs> so Koshyamya was the oldest wife and she's the mother of Lord Rama. And Kaike is the young wife. She is the mother of Bharata. So naturally four sons growing up together. So 
sometimes there will be some competition between them. But actually these four brothers, they live together in perfect peace and harmony. And even though they were born of different mothers, they had equal respect for each of the ladies. And they were always kind and caring for each other. So it happened that as they were growing up, Vishwamitra came there to the palace of Maharaj Dasa. You have to understand, Lord Ramachandra appeared in the Treta Yuga. So at that time, there was a lot of Brahmanas and Kshatriyas. There were hardly any Sutras. Kali Yuga, in this age, Practically everybody is Sutra. You may say Kalo, Sutra, Sambhava. The Kali Yuga, everyone by birth is a Sutra. But in the other ages, like Satya Yuga, Trita Yuga, and a lot of Brahmanas and Kshatriyas. And you even see Dwapara Yuga, there were so many Kshatriyas, the world was overburdened with the Kshatriya king. So Vishwamitra was a Brahmana, he'd been a Kshatriya, but he became a Brahmana. And he came to visit the palace of Maharaj Dasara. And Maharaj Dasara understood his good fortune, that he's very blessed to have such a great soul come to his palace. The palace, like any home in the material world, is a place of politics and intrigue and a lot of envy between people quarreling and fighting. Just like sometimes we go to people's homes and the they're people are arguing with each other. Either the sisters are quarreling with each other or with the brothers. Or the husband and wife are quarreling with each other. And then you have the in-laws also. You just need a mother-in-law or something like that. Definitely there will be more quarreling and arguing. It's the nature of the home. People constantly argue. Kali Yuga, the age of quarrel. We allow the age of Kali to enter into our homes and we quarrel and argue with everyone. So, Maharaj Dathara's palace was no different. 
When you give up this body, you go into the spiritual world. And you will develop our spiritual body. We don't need a material body. Material body means disease, old age, and death. <laughs> but the spiritual body is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. <laughs> So Maharaj Dasara was appreciating the position of Vishwamitra. That he has given up material endeavors. He's not interested in money or adoration or distinction. So Maharaj Tantaras inquired from Vishwamitra how he could serve. He said, please tell me what you want. I will be happy to provide for you. So Vishwamitra was very happy and he told Maharaj Tantaras, it's very good, thank you very much. I've come here because I want to get your son to come with me. So that was a very sudden shock to Dasarath and he was, he, he was very upset and he said, Oh, no, 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 I, I can give you anything, but I cannot give you my son. <laughs> but Vishwamitra said, no, I need your son. He has to come with me. He has to kill some demons. <laughs> so Maharaj Tantara said, I will go with you. I will come with my army. We will kill the demons. But Vishwamitra said, no, it's not possible. Your son, I need your son to come with me. Maharaj Tantarath was shocked. It was too unbearable for him to think of sending his son 
to cooperate with visual illusion. But Vishwamitra assured Maharaj Dasara that if he comes with me, I will give him all the astras, I will teach him all the mantras he needs so that he can kill these demons. So Vishnu interested, I could kill them myself, but I am vowed to the, the work of the Brahmana. So it's the duty of the Kshatriyas to kill the demon. Lord Ramachandra is the Supreme Lord. He is Swayam Bhagavan, but he has come in the form of a king. And he is showing us how to be the perfect Kshatriya king. And the first duty is to be obedient to the Father. So whatever the Father said, then it's the duty of the Son to carry out the order of the Father. So Maharaj Dasarat, he was very reluctant to allow his son to go with Vishwamitra. So he, he, he actually said, better I would die than to give up. Better I will die rather than break my promise. It's very common saying in Hindi language to understand the vow of truthfulness. The better I will die rather than give up my promise. So Maharaj Dasara has to agree to allow Lord Rama to go and Lord Rama goes along with Lakshman and they go with Vishwamitra. And in this way, Lord Ramachandra was taught all the different mantras to kill the demons. It's the duty of the Kshatriyas to learn from the Brahmins. So Vishwamitra was teaching. Lord Ramachandra is Maryata Avatar. He is an incarnation of the Lord who shows the perfect etiquette. He, he does everything, his behavior is very perfect. He would follow all of the principles, all the rules and regulations. So Lord Ramachandra went with Lakshman and they killed the demons. And then Vishwamitra brought Ram and Lakshman to the palace of Maharaj Janak. Because in the palace of Maharaj Janak, there was the famous bowl of 
भगवान शिवा इन्होंने जनक महाराज को दरबार में जो भगवान शिवा को पहाड़ पर रखे दिस बॉय वाज सो हैवी इट टुक 300 मेन टू पिक इट अप और ये धनुष के तीन गोरों को की जिसमें तीन से ज्यादा मनुष्य हो जाएंगे तो बोल ना पड़ा बट मदर सीता the daughter of maharaj chale she could pick the bow ra janak maharaj ko chhori sita le jaye sajile ke dhanush uthaye ra sakar ra so maharaj chale wanted to get a husband who was suitable for his daughter ra kaise kare ke aap us chhori ko lagi lai sriman khojne ko lagi wale vichar ra ra the man and the woman will make a good match when they are equal in qualities the same and similarity to be jana barabar isme yogya bhaye bhane ramro jodi banda cha as the man is the brahmana and the woman is a sudra is not a very good match java sriman brahm yogya ta ko cha ra simati sudra cha bhane to ramro jodi hunda so maharaj janak had invited different kings to come and the The challenge was they have to pick up the bow of Lord Shiva and they have to string that bow. Right. Pradesh Pradesh ke jo bande the, the Raja aur Rajota aur sabhi aao the, Rajyo karo suthaya the isma taan din par isma the doori ban par. So Vishva Mitra brought Lord Ramachandra with Lakshman there. Pravishamitra le chhe Ramachandra aur Lakshman le chhe chhe Maharaj ka aao bhai. and they should have the bow of lord shiva but at this point you shiva would have stayed over in the honor and lord rama of course he offered his respects to the bow that he picked up the bow and he strung it and just as he was going to fire an arrow that he broke it that the bow the bow snapped the <laughs> rama chandra aunu bhayo dhanush uthaunu bhayo this man dodi bannu bhayo र बाण आने र तंग हो सुन र तंग हो दे रे टुकड़ा टुकड़ा बाण तो है। So anyway, it was agreed that Sita was now going to be the wife of Lord Ramachandra. र इस पची इसको स्वीकार हो गया कि रामचंद्र संगत है सीता माता ने विवाह कर लिया। Actually, Mother Sita was born from the earth. She was not a normal boy. र बस तो मैं सीता माता ने उड़ा साधारण स्त्री थी ना वहाँ से धरती पर प्रकट हुए भाई को। But she was found by Maharaj Chandra. नरेंद्र जी के मारा उसने वाले बेटा उन भाई को थी। But Maharaj Chandra was plowing the field one day, performing sacrifice. At that time, Mother Sita appeared from the air. नरेंद्र जी वाले से हाल उस जोते थे जो धरती पर हाल उस जोते थे वाले और जो पूजा कर रहे भाई को थे तो सेम है सीता माता ने प्रकट हुए भाई को। So Mother Sita is the eternal consort of Lord Ramachandra. Mother Sita Maharani, Sasrut, Afno, Jodi, Mother Ramachandra. Just like Lakshmi is the consort of Lord Narayan. Just so like Lakshmi Narayan is the Jodi Mother. So Sita is the consort of Lord Ramachandra. Mother Sita Maharani is Ramachandra. So it was arranged that they would have a big wedding. And it was arranged also they would bring a wife for Lakshman also. But they say that when a girl is married, her Lakshman will marry the other one. And the two other brothers, Bharat and Shatrughna, marriage was also arranged for them. But they say that when Bharat and Shatrughna are married, yeah, they will marry. So in this way, the four brothers were all married. Shatriyas, they usually they will all be married people usually. But Shatriyas, they say they are the ones who are to be married to each other. The Shatriyas, they want to have descendants. You know, the Shatriyas are the ones who are going to be married to each other. They want to continue their line. They are the ones who are going to be married to each other. Some some Shatriyas they didn't marry. Like grandfather Bishma, the same. Hmm. As a boy, Bishma did not marry. Why did he not marry? But there was that was special. That was even more special. Okay, so they all came back to Ayodhya. 
So it happened, Maharaj Dasara was getting old and he wanted to give up the throne. So he thought that Lord Rama is the oldest son, he should become the king. Everyone loves him, everyone likes him, I think he will make a nice king. So Maharaj Tathirath announced that we will have the coronation of Lord Ramachan, my son, will take place tomorrow. But at this time, Bharat and Shatrugna were far away at some relative's house. So when the news was announced, then this one hunchback servant of Mantara. She, she was an evil-minded woman and she came to Kaike and she polluted her mind. And she told her, if this, if Brahma becomes a king, then his mother will be more important and you will not have any position. And your son also, Bharat, will have no position, he won't be anybody important. Rama will take everything and Rama's mother will have all the position and all the glory. So Mantara told Kaike that you have to get your husband to agree to send Ram to the forest. How many years? 14 years, isn't it? And, and he told, he told, she told, Kai, Mantara told Kaike that your husband has promised you two boons. Previously you had helped him when he was injured in the battle. And at that time he was so grateful to you, he promised you that you could have boons, whatever you wanted. But you have never taken anything. But now you have to tell him what you want. And you should tell him, I want Ram should go to the forest for 14 years and my son Bharat should be the king. So Mantara told Kaike, you go to the morning room. Because they're living in a palace, there's many rooms there. So one of the rooms were for people who were not feeling good, who were not happy. So Kaike went there and she put on her old dress and she lay on the floor and 
waited for her husband to come. So Dasara came and he's thinking, where is my wife? Where is my nice young wife? And he was surprised to hear, she is in the morning room, she is morning, she is not happy about something. So immediately he went there to see what was wrong. And he sees Kaiki laying on the floor there and dressed in all garments and looking very miserable. So Maharaj Dantaras comes and says, Oh, my dear wife, what is wrong? How, how do I not have, why are you in this condition? What can I do to make you happy? And Maharaj Tantarat offers so many things. Do you want jewelry? Do you want wealth? Do you want what, what do you need to make you happy? So then she looked him in the face and she told him, Do you remember you promised me two boons? So Dasara said, Yes, well, what do you want? So then she said, First of all, send Ram to the forest for 14 years. And let Bharat become crown king. So when Maharaj Dasara heard this, he fainted. He could not believe. He thought, please, let it not be true. Let it just be some, and my imagination. Please don't let this be happening. But Kaitakiya was very insistent. Yes, I, this is what I want, and if you don't give it to me, then you're not king anymore, you're not truthful. So he tells Kaike, if I give you this, then you're not my wife anymore. My son Ram is more dear to me than anything. I cannot live without him. But Kaikeya is insistent. You promised me two boons. Now you should keep your word. So, Lord, Lord Maharaj Dantarat was in this very difficult position. He did not want to even look at Kaike anymore. But he had to keep his promise. <laughs> So they said, call for Lord Ram, tell Ram to come here. So he came and then Kaike told him that your father wants you to go to the forest for 14 years. And Lord Ram said, 
Yes, if my father wants, then I'm ready to go. I will go tomorrow. Why tomorrow? I will go today. If my father wants, I will do whatever he wants. So this is the mood of Lord Ramachandra. One moment the king is telling him to become the Maharaj Jataras is telling Lord Rama, I want you to become the king. Next minute, he's telling him, I want you to go to the forest for 14 years. But Rama is ready to do whatever is the order of his father. So the, the duty of the son is to carry out the order of the father. The son is called Putra. Putra means the one who saves the father from going to hell. So Maharaj Tathara is broken hearted. He does not want Lord Rama to go. Lord Ramachandra is ready to go alone. But then it happened that Lakshman said that I will go with you. Said, Why you should go alone? Lord Rama likes to be always with his devotees. Actually, the four brothers, Ramachandra, Lakshman, Bharat, and Shatrugna, they are all Vishnu Tattva. They are all like God. But Lord Ram is a senior, and the others are his servants. So Lakshman said, I will go with you. And then Sita said, I also want to come. Lord Ram said, oh no, 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 we cannot take a woman there. Very dangerous to go in the forest. Many rakshasas. And there is no comfort, no luxury for you. To go to the forest means to take the dress made of bark of trees. And the hair should be matted. And no jewelry. So Sita had been living in a palace all of her life. But now she wants to go to the forest. So Lord Ramachandra tried to persuade her not to come. <coughs> but he could not convince her. She was insisting that no, I, I want to be with my husband. It's the duty of the wife to be with the husband. When the husband goes to the forest, the wife also will go with So Sita, Rama and Lakshman. They all went to the forest. And they dressed in the bark of trees. 
Satan did not even know how to wear, how to put on the dress. She had to be shown how to wear this dress. And the people of Ayodhya, they loved Lord Rama so much that they said, we will follow, we will come with you. But Lord Ramachandra said, if you all come with me, <coughs> then the city will become the forest and the forest will become the city. <laughs> So you all have to stay here. It means Ayodhya. So the birthplace of Lord Ramachandra is there in Ayodhya. In the course of time, somehow a Muslim temple was built on the birthplace. But somehow over the years they managed to remove the Islam temple. And now they have built a temple to Lord Ramachandra. The birthplace is very important. So in the past, India has been ruled by Islamic rulers, people like Aurangzeb. So there is some idea like Bharat Mazai, Muslim, and Likhaftakari, just like Aurangzeb, just like Aurangzeb. And this Aurangzeb was very powerful. He went everywhere, breaking temples, smashing deities. And he wanted to also, he also took the mosque at the birthplace of Lord Rama. Even at the birthplace of Lord Krishna, there's a mosque. There's also, today there's also a big temple. So Lord Ramachandra went to the forest and he lived in the forest for 40 years. Of course, Lord Ramachandra has a mission when he comes into this world. Paritranaya Sadhunam Venus Chaya Chaturskuta. When the Lord comes in this world, his purpose is to kill the demons. So Lord Ramachandra went to the forest, he took with him his bow and arrows. And in the course of his 14 years in the forest, he killed many Rakshasas. Of course, he also, they also he had Mother Sita kidnapped by Ravana. But then with the help of Hanuman and the other monkeys, he recovered Mother Sita. They found out that the Ravan had taken Sita to the island of Lanka. So Lord Ramachandra was so angry, he was going to burn the ocean. But the deity of the ocean came before him and begged Lord Ramachandra 
to build a bridge across the ocean. So in this way, Lord Ramachandra, with his army of bears and monkeys, he crossed over to Lanka. And they had a great battle, and Lord Ramachandra killed Ravan and his brother Kumbhakan. And he brought back Mother Sita. And then the 14 years was finished and the Lord Rama went back to Ayodhya. Now during the 14 years at that, his father had already left the world. The father, Tathara, had he had uh, one day he was hunting. And he heard some voice, he heard the sound, he thought it was a deer. But when he fired the arrow, he had a human form. <coughs> he, and then he went there and he found out that he had killed a human person. He thought he was killing a deer. <coughs> so the person who he killed with his arrow, in his dying words, he told Maharaj Tattara, he said, please go and tell my mother and father how you have shot your arrow into me and I won't be able to come home and take care of them. The, the man was, a, was living like a, a brahmachari. He was taking care of his mother and father and he just gone to get some water from the river. But Maharaj Dasara thought it was a deer. And he fired the arrow, killed, killed the man. So then Maharaj Dasarath went to find the mother and father. And he told them what happened. So the couple, they were both elderly and invalid. They were not able to take care of themselves. They were depending on their son to take care of But now their son had been killed. So the couple decided there's no point in us living any longer. We will also give up our life. So they built a fire. And the both the man and woman entered into the fire, giving up. But before they entered into the fire, they told Maharaj Dasara. They said, because of you, we have to die without our son dress. So, the same will happen to you. You will also die without your son being present. And it happened. The Lord Ramachandra had gone and Maharaj Tathara was at home. And he 
So this is basically what happens in Ramayana. It's a lot of tragedy. <laughs> but there's a lot of ecstasy also. It is the pastime of the Supreme Lord. Okay. Any question? So the man who keep pressing her. The Lord Ramachandra has his own abode in the spiritual world. That is Ayodhya. And all the devotees, when Lord Ramachandra finished ruling the world, he ruled the world for thousands of years, and then he left the world, and he entered into the Sarai, into the Sarayu River, and he went back to Godhead. And all of his devotees, the people of Ayodhya, they followed him. They also entered into the Sarai and went to the spiritual world. But Hanuman, he stayed. Lord Ramachandra told Hanuman, you don't need to come back to Kharja, you stay here and preach. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shukrupa ki jai. Shri Ramachandra Bhagavan ki jai. Hare Hare.